Ravens versus Bills. This game is going to be something. And it's going to be nationally televised, so I ain't even got to find a live stream to watch it. But anyway, ooh, I, I have been struggling with trying to decide who I really think is going to win this game because I feel like it could, I mean, any given Sunday, it could obviously go back and forth. But with this one, I just, I feel like it could definitely go either way. Um, Bills, their team is banged up. They facing several different injuries on both sides of the ball. Uh, the Ravens, the defense it is a huge concern. It's a big worry. Uh, the pass rush, Justin Houston, he may not even play. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I just, so I don't know, man. I don't know. But I do know that both offenses are going to try to take full advantage, as they should. Because, hey, there ain't nobody going to have pity on you in the NFL. Oh, you know what? They're banged up. So let's take it a little bit easy. No, nobody's doing that. So to talk Bills, to talk Ravens, to talk Buffalo versus Baltimore, I had to bring on a very, very special guest. He was the first person that I hit up as soon as we were done with the Patriots. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team keep it clean um, for this game that we got coming up against the Buffalo Bills. As soon as we were done talking Patriots, I, I, I could only hit up one person. I, I had to hit up my guy Rico to, to bring him on because I, I knew that he would bring it. And I know he may ruffle some feathers a little bit, but hey, that's all good. That's part of it. Man. Um, so Rico, first and foremost, I appreciate you coming on. Um, but let, let everybody know where they can find you at Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff and exactly what it is that you do. What's good, everybody? Ravens fans, what's happening? It's your boy Rico back at it again to serve you that Buffalo Stampede. You guys already know what it was last year. We're going to make you taste it again this year. But anyway, you guys can catch me on Twitter, Rico underscore BF underscore and everything Buffalo Fanatics. If you want to hit me on my YouTube channel, it's the Rico Report. Always serving cold dishes. We just got served a cold dish last week <laughs> by the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> we got a rebound and bounce back against the Ravens, but I know y'all hungry, so it's going to be a good one. Tough one. Oh, yeah. uh, you already know. And yeah, we, we both got served cold dishes by the Dolphins Ooh. two weeks in a row. Uh, <laughs> and and nail-biting games, too. Mm, mm, mm. But mm. it's all part of the process, man. So, uh, jumping straight into it. Josh Allen. Mm. Um, the, the, the talk of this whole offseason has been just how the Buffalo Bills have been building their roster. Um, and we talked on your show the other day uh, and you asked me a really, really good question. And I was like, I was kind of like puzzled a little bit, like how to answer it. You asked me what, what weaknesses do I see on this Buffalo Bills roster? Now, um, I got to ask you that same question, but health, health aside, minus injuries, mm. what could, could the Ravens do to possibly exploit the Buffalo Bills? Right now, uh, injuries aside, let's just say everybody's mm -hmm. healthy. Where where could you guys exploit us? You're gonna have to. You're gonna. It's it's our young receiver. It's our young cornerbacks. Oh, First round uh, pick by your Elam. Uh, we got Trey White. That's obviously uh, out uh, nursing injury. He'll be back shortly in the next two to three weeks, give or take. We hope. And then we've got Christian Bentford, another corner. Now, Dane Jackson has been manning the spot. He's the third year corner. So we've got some young guys. At the on the on the edges. So if you're gonna exploit us anywhere, it's got to be there. You got to force us, force us to bring our safeties up for help, and then maybe you can get us get us over the edge. But at the end of the day, if you're going to attack us somewhere, you got to attack us on the outside against our corners because they're young, they're inexperienced. So you've got to have an experienced offensive coordinator that can come in and exploit us and find a way. And we're very well familiar with G Row, so <laughs> he was gonna have to dig into that bag and try to figure some things out. <laughs> and try to explore it some way. So find a way and yeah. make it happen, baby. Kyer Elam, Christian Bedford, Dane Jackson, those are the ways that you gotta you gotta get us. Now, um, speaking of the secondary, uh the Bills, they just signed uh Xavier Rhodes. Yes, they um, did. So how do you expect him to play in this game? And if so, how much? 
Ooh, Xavier Rhodes. You're not you might not see much of him uh this coming uh this coming game. Um mm. it's gonna be you're gonna see a lot of uh a lot of the young corners, you're gonna see Kyrie, you're gonna see Lewis that's gonna be getting in there, uh the UB product. Um, but if Rhodes gets in, it's because he's familiar with um Leslie Frazier's system back in Minnesota. So oh. we'll have some familiarity in that regard. So chances are he may he may pull a Cole Beasley. We might bring him onto the practice squad and immediately elevate him to the corner spot <laughs> as depth. Um, uh, mm. but I can't see a lot of Xavier Rhodes playing, but He's mm. the prototypical size that we want. I'm surprised we didn't go after Joe Hayden because mm. Joe, he's got a lot of buddies on the squad. Jordan Poirier, he used to, be, used to play with Jordan Poirier back in Cleveland. Uh, he's friends with uh, Von Miller, very good friends with Von Miller. So I'm thinking, okay, he's got enough influence that they can bring Joe Hayden in. Joe Hayden is retired, but he just retired. So he's ready right. to come out of it. But Xavier Rhodes is that prototypical lengthy, what, 6'6", six, six, one corner um, and uh, understands Lindsey Frazier's defense. So if we're going to grab somebody. We want someone that we can actually plug and play if an injury happens. Dane Jackson could be coming back, so he'll be just an emergency piece, but I can't see him jumping into the active role. Mm, okay. All right. And, yeah, that's a really good point about uh, Leslie Frazier. Mm. Now, um, we know about Josh Allen, of course. We know yeah. about Stefan Diggs, and we're familiar with uh, Gabe Davis. Um, but who would you say, uh, both on offense and defense, are, are players that – a lot of Ravens fans may not be too familiar with that could have a big impact on the game. Hmm. A lot of people, the people that you guys would not know about on this bill squad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, man, if, if they, Isaiah McKenzie's making some noise. Okay. May, people might not be paying attention to the slot. Isaiah McKenzie and Jameson Crowder, right? You already know about Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis is, is coming on. But his name is already ringing bells around the league. Stefan mm-hmm. Diggs, you guys already know about Stefan Diggs. Right. Nasa Knox, you hear it about him. But <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie is the one name that is going to start to kind of ring bells in this league. He had a nice game against uh, the Dolphins last uh, last week. Uh, he had a monster game against the Patriots last year when Gabe Davis and Cole Beasley were out. Isaiah McKenzie just went off. So Isaiah McKenzie in the slot uh, could be someone that you guys want to pay attention to defensively. Um, defensively, it's, I mean, there's it, Greg Rousseau, he, oh, he's, he's, a, he's a, young, a young name, but Greg Rousseau is absolutely playing out of his mind right now. So I know a lot of attention is going to go to Von Miller, but mm-hmm. Greg Rousseau is someone that is pushing the edge and he's soaking all the knowledge up from Von Miller. I mean, you, when you bring in a Von, a Von Miller type of player, right? Future Hall of Famer accolades mm-hmm. all over the league. Mm-hmm. You don't just bring him in for his talents. You bring him in for his mind. Right. So you want him to share that those nuggets with the young bucks that we have, like the Carlos Bashams, the Ed Olivers, the Greg Rousseau's. So when you see that line, it's not a Von Miller line. Oh, it's, if you stop Von Miller, you stop. No, 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 no. He's soaking up. They're soaking up all the knowledge from Von Miller. So Greg Rousseau on the one side is who you want to pay attention to. And on the mm-hmm. offensive side, aside from you mean the big dogs, we have Isaiah McKenzie's when you want to pay attention to. OK, I appreciate that. And, and, and man, you are uh, speaking about all those names. I'm like, why? Uh, I, of course, I we're all familiar with Von Miller, mm. uh, and we know what he can do. But then you start listing that names and names, even after Gregory Russo. It's like, oof, yeah, Ed Oliver too. Yeah, y'all, y'all got a, I got a little squad of pass rushes there. We, I mean, um, we now, no what was that? We had no choice. We had to <laughs> fortify that line because when you have guys like Lamar Jackson coming to you, you have mm-hmm. guys like you know, say these 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 top tier quarterbacks, discipline. Is one thing, but stopping the run is another. And you boys, you mm-hmm. boys run the rock. That's what y'all do. That's your strength, right? You make us fear the run, and then Andrews <laughs> exploits us in in the middle of the field. So we we got to stay disciplined. That's how it's got to be. Yeah. And what was funny about this year is that the Ravens' run game has actually been uh, their weakness because mm. uh, they just have not been able to run the ball thus far. Just got J.K. Dobbins back last week, and he looked good, but. They still couldn't pop off like that like crazy. Justice Hill, uh, he looked better, uh, and he was a nice contributor. And I I expect him to be uh, a focal point this week, him and J.K., because right now um, it's expected to rain uh, on Sunday. Um, So that could completely change how uh, both teams game plan for this game. Mm -hmm. Um, But how has the Bills running game looked this year? 
Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is my that's my biggest gripe with the Bills. And the that gripe has been uh itching at me since LaShawn McCoy left because we haven't had that guy, you know, I mean, to to run the rock. And now I'm call me old school where I need my running back with 15 to 20 carries. Okay. I don't need the running back by committee. And this is an interesting and this is why this is so interesting that you bring this up because right now we have a running back by committee that I absolutely detest. We've got Devin Singletary that Bills fans deem RB1. I personally believe that he's a very good back, but he's an RB1 on the Bills. You bring Devin Singletary anywhere else, it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. We're going to see if he is. Then you've got Zach Moss, the Utah native, um, Florida native, excuse me, went to Utah. Good back, solid back. It's just that he hasn't turned into what we thought he would be, right? That bruiser back. Good speed, but just hasn't panned out. He has not been able to supplant Devin Singletary. And then you add in James Cook, the Georgia State, the Georgia running back, James Cook. Speed, great receiver out of the backfield, but you got three backs. And my saying is when you got three running backs, you got no running backs. So I don't, I'm not liking it. I prefer to go by a two back system, get your guy the touches, and then your backup gets the backup touches. But having three running backs go, we can't get into a rhythm. And mm-hmm. furthermore, when you have your quarterback, you know this very well, leading in rushing, leading in passing, you've got all the weight on your quarterback. It shouldn't go that way. Take the weight <laughs> off your quarterback and give it to your RBs. But mm-hmm. you give the RB an opportunity to get warm and get going instead of just spreading the, spreading the love all over the place. You can't get into a rhythm. It's like a rhythm shooter, man. You can't just spot me in and expect me to knock it down. I need to get warm. I need to get going, right? Mm-hmm. These guys got no rhythm. So I'm in a, in a state of frustration with my running backs, but we're in the middle of the pack. We're in the middle of the pack in the, in the year. We're close to you guys. But like, again, your quarterback is leading the team in rushing. So yeah. is mine. We can't have that. <laughs> hey, I, I feel you all the way on that one, man. Mm-hmm. Um, now, with Stefan Diggs, we know Stefan Diggs, one of the best wide receivers in the league. I, I know um a lot of Ravens fans, whenever they see Stefan Diggs, uh, they think about uh, what could have been uh, the possibilities of the Ravens would have got Stefan Diggs back then, but it obviously didn't happen. And he, he went to Minnesota. He thrived uh, and then went to the Buffalo Bills. He's continued to thrive um, with all the attention that we would expect Stefan Diggs to get. Um, how do you feel that he's going to do in this game? Stefan Diggs is going to right now. He, he's coming off a decent. A, he's coming off of a decent game against the Miami Dolphins. He's got Xavier Howard that was supposed to lock him up, and apparently, uh, according to folks, he got locked up. Well, seventy-four yards, seven receptions, not a lock up to me. Now he's going to. I mean, Miami fans, they they all over the place. So he's going to Baltimore. Native, he's from Maryland, so he's going to be able to do what he's supposed to do, and that is run amok. Now, here's the deal. You guys have a, a, a very good defensive backfield. I'm not going to lie. Marlon Humphrey, I like Marlon Humphrey a lot, and I like him. I like his Twitter antics even more. I think it's hilarious. Now, uh, my guy, Marcus Peters, that's the one. That's the X factor for me, Marcus Peters. Um, obviously, Williams, your safety is, is nice. I get it. But Marcus Peters is the one that I'm going to be paying attention to a lot because he's coming off from a big time injury. He's coming off of a big time injury. He's coming and he's got to go against Diggs. He just came off of a tough matchup last week. And now you got Diggs that's a motivated Diggs. Fam, it's going to be a tough day for Marcus Peters. And Josh Allen is a he is a petty individual. So because he didn't have the year he was supposed to have last year, he's going to try his very best to pour it on you guys. And I feel for you guys, but defensively, you guys are going to have to do something about. Stefan Diggs because he's gonna go off. It's not gonna be as hot as it was as it was in Miami. So be ready, <laughs> recharge, recharge, Mister Diggs, and uh, he's got to show up, man. He's got at least fifty people that's gonna be showing up from family, mm. friends, and so on and so forth. So he can't come out there and pull up a dud. He can't. So he has to go off. So I feel bad. I feel bad for y'all. Mm. And and that's why it's gonna be extra important uh, that the Ravens they uh, they pay attention um, because that's been somewhere where they've been lacking. Uh, against these receivers like Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, he went off for uh, over 150 yards last mm-hmm. week. Um, of course, everybody knows about Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, who what they did. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's important that the, the Ravens recognize, like, who's who and where where those guys are. Because uh, Ravens have 
Mar- Mar- you mentioned Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters. They, they've been doing a great job this year, and Marcus Peters seems to be now all the way back Good. Uh, from his injury. Um, and, and I know Marlon Humphrey, he was dealing with a groin injury a couple of weeks ago, but he seems to be straight now. Um, but the, the biggest concern is the young corners, the young secondary uh, for the Ravens and, and where teams have taken advantage uh, of the young guys. Brandon Stevens uh, in his second year, Jalen Armour Davis, and also um, Demarion Williams, uh, both in their first year. Yep. Uh, so it's important that the Ravens recognize that. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. We Good game this week. Mm-hmm. Exciting game this week. Yes, sir. Wish it could have been on prime time, but that, that's cool. We'll take it at one o'clock as long as we get the game. Um, how do you think this game is gonna go? You got a score prediction, cool. If you don't got a score prediction, even cooler. Uh, but who do you think comes out on top and why? All right. Well, we're both it's funny because this is a, a weird game for the two of us mm-hmm. uh, because we're we face an AFC foe. Uh, not too long ago, you lost to the Miami Dolphins. We lost to the Miami Dolphins, an mm-hmm. AFC conference foe, right? We lost to the Miami Dolphins. That's in our division, so we can't have that. So All we right. cannot go down two games to two AFC foes. We just can't, right? You took care of the Patriots. Tough matchup. Took care of them. We just can't. So I have the Bills winning this one. We're bouncing back. It's going to be a tough one, but I think I believe we bounce back. I think we're going to lean heavily on the shoulders of our pass rush. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that you guys are a little banged up on the old line um, mm-hmm. and uh, the run game hasn't been as efficient as you would like it to be. And I think we've got a lot of veteran guys on this team that are disciplined because that, that RPO that you guys have that read option that you guys have with Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson is absolutely deadly. And yeah. I saw it on full display against the dolphins right up the gut, untouched 70 yards like he's gone right (laughs) we need to be disciplined enough to to really put a clamp on that um Mm -hmm. so this game is going to be close early but i think that we break away uh and we start really exploiting the middle of the field uh and um and really just using allen's legs to buy time and i'm hoping that marcus peters is disciplined enough because he he will bite he will definitely bite. he's always got his eyes in the backfield so if you allow him to have the eyes in the backfield don't I wouldn't worry so much about Stefan Diggs going off. It's Gabe Davis that you need to guys you guys need to watch out for on the other side. Hmm. Gabe Davis is a big boy, contested catch, and he's got deceptive speed, man. And he's a big time player. So Gabe Davis is the one that you guys should really watch out for. But I think this is going to be close at the beginning, and then the Bills pull away. Score predictions. I hate them. You know I do, but it's I'm gonna give you good. score predictions. Oh, we're gonna okay. we're gonna go right back to where we normally are and scoring 30 points a game. So I'm gonna go 35. Um, and I'll give y'all. I mean, you guys are gonna get in the end zone. You got to. I'll give you guys. Uh, I'll give you guys twenty three. Oh, oh, decisive victory. 23. Yeah, thirty five, twenty three. Couple field goals. You guys got a big time kicker and, and Tucker, and you can't keep Lamar and Andrews out the out the end zone. It's very difficult to do that. So, uh, you, you guys will do that. But uh, I think we'll put the clamps on that def- at that offensive run game of yours. Okay. All right. So I appreciate it. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this thing goes. I've been so uh, back and forth on this game uh, like crazy, man, um, because both teams just they, they present so many different challenges to one another. Uh, both teams are dealing with so many uh, significant injuries uh, to different True. spots, both on offense and defense. Um, so, yeah, it, it should be a really, 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 really good one. It's going to be yeah. a special game. Uh, but Rico, I appreciate you coming on. I, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, and I appreciate you still going strong, even while the dogs decided, you know what, we're gonna start barking. So shout out good. to them too. Oh, yeah. We don't, we, listen, man, we don't stop recording. We know life happens. <laughs> we're not in the studio like Stephen A. Smith. We got things around us that we got to deal with. Now, this is a message to Ravens fans. You thought I was just gonna be nice because I was cordial. But Uh-oh. Ravens fans, don't forget. I need y'all to forget because I'm gonna be in the comment section to see what's going on. You okay. remember me from last time. I was talking my ish, and I kept it rolling, and it felt yeah. so good when I pick six I took it back to the house. So expect another pick six. Lamar is due for one. He's oh, due for one wow. errant pass. We're going to take that and we're going to take it back to the house. And I hope it's my rookie cornerback, my rookie hey, cornerback, Kair. Ooh, I hope it happens. So <laughs> it's going to be a good game, man. Ravens, Bills, big matchup. Salute to my guy, my man, Ingram Ravens. He's been doing them things. So you guys show appreciation, man, because the content creation game is tough in itself. And he's and he's grinding yes. out there for it. So give this guy a big shout out. I'm gonna feel for him because he's gonna be silent on Sunday after <laughs> I ain't gonna hear from him. He's gonna be silent as ever. <laughs> so we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Appreciate y'all.
I appreciate you. We out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.